So in today's episode of basic white belt techniques that I use as a black belt, I'm going to be showing you guys two of the ways I really like taking the back. And again, they're very, very simple. You can use these at any belt level. Um, this is a re-recording because someone deleted the video. So we're redoing this today. You guys don't know that. I'm just giving my, my guy behind the camera. I'm giving him shit about it. To help show you the techniques will be my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson. Let's get started. All right, guys. So we've been doing some different stuff with the series. We've done some guard passing. Um, we've done some rear naked choke stuff. So let's go into two different back takes. Um, again, I showed you one back take from that double underpass, but let's talk about one that'll happen a lot of times. So one of the ways that I get to the back a lot, especially in competitions uh, or in tough rolls, is from the turtle position or when someone is turtling. Because basically, I'm passing the guard, right? I just got passed. They begin to roll up here to go to the turtle. Now. There's going to be two one two back takes I'm going to show you. One is going to be the near side, I call it the near side slide. The other one is going to be the far side roll. The first one is going to be when I'm kind of ahead of the person. Okay, so what I mean by ahead of the person is I'm sort of a step ahead of them mentally. Like I'm coming around for the pass, I see them turtling, and I'm thinking I'm going to do this near side slide. So what this looks like, as soon as he turns, okay, let's turn this direction here. We talked about this on the, the back mount stuff earlier this week or earlier in the series, but I want to get my chest connected to the back. Again, as soon as I can see those shoulders, I want to get my chest connected because this is, this is back mount. Once I get into this position, I have all kinds of submissions and I can take the bat back much more e uh, easily. So from here, once I get this position now, I'm going to get my seat belt, get the grip here, and I'm going to drive into him. So now if he tries to go back, if he realizes he made it a mistake, it's going to be really tough. So as he begins to go up to the back mount here, he's going to have to turn his hips over. If Adam tries to block this, this knee in and stay really tight, if he tries to come up like this, me laying on him, he's not gonna be able to do that. So what he has to do is he has to kick that leg back just a little bit so that he can get his hips to the ground. And as he does this, it creates a gap that I can shoot my hook into, okay? And this is why I call it the near side slide. You're almost sliding into it. Now, this is opposed to the shooting the knee in. Come over and do this to me, Adam. Some people do this and they'll shoot the knee in. I don't, I don't think it's very good. So from here, if he gets the connection to the back, right here, as he comes up, shoot the knee through instead of the foot. Right here, if he shoots that knee and tries to pull me back, all I can do is roll up and I can start to slide out of this. So I, I'm not a big fan of the knee. I'm actually shooting the foot through the gap, okay? Take a look at this again. So let's face the camera this way. So where I want you guys to pay attention to right now, come on back this way, is right here. So I've just passed the guard, I've got my seatbelt connection, and the seatbelt, just a little detail guys on this, the seatbelt can move around the body depending on where I need it to. So my lock on this initial seatbelt is gonna be down here so I can have my elbow on the mat, okay? Now as he begins to drive up, I turn, shoot my foot through. Now, check this out. On the seat belt, I'm now going to pull this grip back to pull him back into the position and get that second hook in, okay? Let's look at this from a couple other angles here real quick, and then I'll show you the far side roll when the person's a little bit faster. From the back side, we're right here, locked in. He begins to go. I'm going to be posted on my foot and opposite elbow. You can almost think about it as like doing a technical stand-up where we're posted and you stand. Same idea, I'm doing the crossbows. This allows my, me to take my, my knee and move it around wherever I need to. Now notice I'm gonna turn my foot in and shoot it in position and then pull the person in. And if for some reason, if he blocks this second hook, I'll lock into a halfback position here and extend his body out and then go in. And to be honest with you, in most cases, if I'm playing the top side arm position, real quick Adam, if I'm playing this side, most often, like if I'm competing, I'll put my hooks in, get my like my four points or whatever, and then go back in. And I usually play like a half back position here. I don't tend to play this too often on this side. The far side roll, a little different. The far side roll is gonna happen when the person beats us to the punch. So if we're passing, if he's really fast, I begin to pass, and as I'm going, he gets up to turtle, and he beats me to the position here. So in this situation, what we're gonna do is we're going to basically roll on the far side. So the way that I like to get this started is from a turtle position so that you can get used to the physical cue. So let's say he's up in a turtle. 
The cue that I'm looking for that's gonna tell me to go for this roll is this knee comes in and I can feel his hip begin to shift downward. When I feel that, I've gotta just jump over to the other side. Now there's a little bit of a leap of faith in this, okay? Now, when I do this, I'm not gonna be using a traditional like seatbelt grip and I'm not trying to put my hook in here either. What I'm doing is I'm trying to keep my chest to back connection here and as that knee begins to go inward and I feel his hip shift, that's my cue to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knee and I wanna sit to the side here. Notice I'm on my hip, okay? So we're not taking our foot and going in, we're putting our knee there. Because one, it might be hard to get that foot in there, but more importantly, if I throw this foot in and he begins to roll, my foot may get stuck and I've seen people get their foot broken that way. So what we're doing instead is we were here, we're, we're playing this position, whatever, I feel him shift, I'm gonna post, as he begins to fall back, I'm just staying with him. Now, that's the first part. So I just rolled with him. Notice here, I don't have a hook. My first hook is gonna be on the other side. I'll bite down on the inside of his thigh to continue this roll, and then we'll roll. Now, I talked about this with the rear naked choke the other day, adding a rear naked choke, just going for it, right? And this is a beautiful place to do this because we just got this roll initiated. As we begin to move him, a lot of times they're not really thinking about the neck right now, and you can roll them right into a rear naked choke or a collar grip, and that allows you to get the second hook in because he's gonna start fighting to defend his neck, which brings his defensive hands up to defend his neck, okay? So again, from a different angle here, I'll show you what it looks like. We're here, he begins to dip. I'll typically post on my hand and my foot. This hand over here is just sort of cupping his pec and pulling him in tight. Again, the focus is to keep the chest to back connection alive. So he begins to go, we roll, pull in with the legs, shoot in and go. Now what this would look like in full, like sort of a decent speed from a passing situation. Let's say we're going, I'm going for the pass here, we're driving. All right guys, so that's two ways I like to take the back from a guard passing situation. Those two are workhorses for me. I've used them a ton over the years. Um, they've been really useful to me. The key to both of those movements to make them work is the timing. Neither one of them is very complicated. It's just about being really sensitive to the movements and so you need to drill them a lot. But once you get them down, again, that far side roll, you'll feel the dip against a really crafty guy who's like, you know, that plays guard and turtles a lot. And you'll just get that roll and it'll fall right into place. And it's the same thing with the near side slide. A lot of times you're driving in, they expose the back and you just feel it. So again, if you like those techniques, my encouragement to you is to drill them or at the very least, try to hit them in rolling for a long period of time if you're not gonna drill them to get time to play around with them and sort of learn how they work. And uh, that's it. So that's another edition of basic white belt techniques I use as a black belt. We'll see you again next week with another edition of the uh, the series. I'm finished. Adam. Adam.